my topic of discussion today, non-invasive FFRCT, a new frontier in diagnosis of coronary artery disease. So in the given 10 minutes time, I'll have to rush through, so I had excused my speed. So I think the first segment is role of invasive FFR in assessing the functional significance of anatomical lesions. As we can see in this uh, slide, there are two patients, both have moderate disease uh, uh, in the uh, left anterior descending artery, but only one of them has functionally significant disease. Which one is it? As of now, we kind of lean on to doing uh, non-invasive uh, stress echo and SPECT scans, which have been in vogue for a long time, almost three decades or four decades. But because there are limitations in the temporal and uh, 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 also the um, spec uh, spatial resolutions, their sensitivity and specificity are suboptimal. So at this point of time, we are kind of stuck with, if you can see the uh, screen to my extreme right, invasive FFR, uh, which has better sensitivity and specificity. But today's talk, I am focusing on how we can go about doing this non-invasively. As my previous speaker, speaker said very eloquently, invasive FFR is the gold standard, at least for moderate, severe, you know, moderate lesions. And this has been proven in multiple studies, FAME 1, FAME 2, et cetera. There's no, it's, it's well accepted, it's a gold standard today. My goal today is to take the audience, we can do the same thing by doing non-invasive studies. So that's where the non-invasive FFRCT comes into picture. What is this non-invasive FFRCT? Well, this is on the physics, which has been for almost half a century. It's called fluid dynamics, the physics of fluid dynamics. On the top of that, they had a computational fluid dynamics, which quantifies the fluid pressure and velocity based on certain physical loss of mass conservation, et cetera. This has been extensively used in the Department of Aeronautics. Thanks to some of the researchers and doctors from Stanford and a group of doctors from an uh, institution called Heart Flow in San Francisco, Dr. Taylor and Dr. Jardins, uh, that group have brought this technology to human coronary flows and gave us some answers. In addition to anatomical uh, variables, they also take into consideration that certain pathophysiological variables, namely velocity across the stenosis, the eddy currents, the index myocardial mass, which is being supplied by the specific stenotic artery. Also, as Dr. Manioria was pointing out, they also take into consideration microvascular resistance at hyperemia. And of course, blood viscosity plays a major role in fluid dynamics because anemic patients versus uh, polycythemia, the hemodynamics and fluid dynamics will change. So all these pathophysiological variables also take into consideration. And uh, in a simple way to put it, take anatomical variables, add physiological variables, fed it through a supercomputer, which gives us a calculated FFRCT, uh, and that is all done non-invasively. The beauty of this technology is, it is done from our day-to-day -day routine, typically acquired CT scans in your hospital or in your lab. There is no need of additional image acquisition, there's no need of modifying your image protocols. We can do either prospective or retrospective EKG gating. And there's no need of administering vasodilators, et cetera. It sounds like magic. This is a standard hospital workflow. Your technician does your study. The raw data is uploaded through the cloud and sent to the heart flow lab in uh, Redwood City in San Francisco. In the lab, they do the image segmentation and 3D modeling of the coronary arteries. 
after adding the pathophysiological variables, it is computed and the results are back in your lab within six hours of procedure is done. It's, it sounds like magic. Is it real? Yes, it has been validated. This, there are multiple studies. Uh, I, there are so many here, there's no way uh, in 10 minutes of time I could cover all of them. I just given a, a list of important studies starting from discovered de facto trials to the most recent Scott Hart and Pacific trials. Uh, let us kind of, what I did was, I took a summary of all the studies and for this audience, I want to give conclusions. What we noted is, there is significant improvement in specificity with the FFRCT compared to CTA alone. And addition of FFRCT to traditional risk fact stratification showed positive impact on patient management and outcomes. There was 50% reduction in cardiovascular events in FFRCT group compared to the usual parameter driven uh, patient management. Also, there was 30% reduction in, uh, oops, excuse me, in downstream cost by decreasing the number of invasive procedures with no negative impact on the patient safety. Also, it's noted there is excellent prognosis with the need to FFRCT. As Dr. Monevari was mentioning, it's not only the stenosis, it is the quality of the lesion. For example, lipid-rich lesions can cause significant ischemia even though it's of moderate degree stenosis. That is interesting. And of course, this technology non-invasively, we can have non-invasive functional syntax code instead of going through our invasive usual well-accepted gold standard syntax code. And there's a quantum leap in the recent years by adding artificial intelligence and machine learning in terms of reconstruction technologies. Now, this is a new kid on the block, CT perfusion. I think my next speaker, Dr. Johan Christopher, will speak on CT perfusion. The CT MPI and FFRCT, both these technologies identify functionally significant CAD with comparable accuracy. But by combining these two technologies, we can really do a much better job in a stepwise fashion. Of course, at present time, for ischemia diagnosis, that is the gold standard. Oh, this is an abstract uh, which I wrote a couple of years ago for CSI annual uh, updates, along with the Dr. Christopher Jarns from HeartFlow and Dr. Srinivas Kumar from Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad. Now, I have one or two case examples. Uh, look at this. Uh, top layer, CCTA is done non-invasively. This is 50% or more. FFRCT is done non-invasively. It is 0.74, indicating it's positive for ischemia. But the same thing was proven by invasive angiography and invasive FFR. The lower uh, panel shows similar lesion, more than 50%, but FFRCT non-invasively, it is shown it's non-functional, non-significant. Same thing was proven by FFRCT and invasive CAT. The point of this slide is we can go by doing everything non-invasively and preventing invasive procedures. This is another interesting point I want to highlight. The other functional tests reach per patient accuracy, for example, stress EKG, or at best, per vessel accuracy, like SPECT, CMR, or stress echo. Whereas FFRCT reaches per segment, at each segment, we can find out if it is functionally significant or not. Now, there are certain limitations, technical issues. For example, unless the CT we have done in the lab is perfect, high quality, without any artifacts. Unless we do that, there is high rejection rate, around 10 to 15%. Then there is high level of coronary, coronary calcium also impacts the quality and sensitivity of the findings. So recently there are AI and ML are being brought into the picture 
which will solve this problem of coronary calcium. Currently, this FFRCT specificity and sensitivity is low with stents and venous grafts. And this is the bottleneck. Proprietary technology requiring need for off-site supercomputer analysis limits widespread use at present time. Hopefully in the near future, this bottleneck will be opened up. Other technical issues, we are taking a lot of assumptions here, mathematical assumptions of coronary flow, coronary resistance, and individual patient's response to hyperemia. Of course, usual problems of insurance and payers. Now, there's what's called virtual stenting. There's one minute uh, uh, video of developing for the first time. Before I conclude, this is my last slide. I want to highlight this. Combination of CTA for anatomy, functional FFRCT for stenosis, and CT perfusion for ischemia. Putting these three things together, it will become a good standard and dictate the patient management. At present, there's an ongoing trial, trial number so and so, which will be coming out within two years that will hit the nail on the wall that CTA, FFRCT, and CT perfusion, non-invasively, we can get by. This will be the future non-invasive one-stop shop in patient management. Please note, FDI approved this in USA, NIH in the UK, and very promising outlook for global expansion. Thank you very much.